Okay, we are recording. Well, everybody, again, I am so excited that you guys got on here tonight. I know weekends are not the easiest time, but weeknights are not either. So, you know, we just have to prioritize and make do and make sure we get on these every week. Um, so thank you, everybody, who made it happen. I am very, very excited. We have Rosalind Payne. She is a diamond silver. You are still diamond silver, right? I'm actually diamond gold now. <gasps> you are? Okay, so she's a diamond gold ambassador. And for those who don't know, when you reach the top level of diamond, you can earn a re-entry position and enter into the company again under yourself and start building a whole nother team under yourself. So she has now achieved gold on her second leg. So wow, girl, that is crazy. Oh my goodness. Okay. But anyway, she is going to just share her story with us and give us her diamond uh, gold wisdom. So take it away, girl. Okay. Hi, you guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me tonight. This is, this is awesome. Um, I'm, uh, like she said, I'm Rosalind Payne. Uh, I live in McKinney, Texas. I'm Diamond Gold Ambassador with Plexus Worldwide. Uh, my journey started back in uh, June of 2013. So I've just celebrated my three-year anniversary with Plexus. Um, and my journey started uh, back in the day when my best friend, Celeste Gwynn, uh, she signed up um, under her college best friend named Jen Hawkins. And Celeste had been on the products for about six to eight months. And she lost weight. She you know, was feeling great, looking fabulous. So I knew she was doing something. And we kind of talked about whatever she was taking. And I was like, whatever. Because Celeste is the kind of person that would always try anything, you know, and I'm not. And so I was like, oh, she's just doing whatever else is the new latest and greatest thing. So then when she started marketing it, I thought, okay, now she's, now she's flat out crazy. And, you know, being her best friend, I was the first person she called. And she's like, Ross, we totally got to do this together. And I was just completely uninterested. I was like, you know, absolutely not. It's not me. That's not, you know, I don't do that kind of stuff. I'm, you know, I, I was a, um, an advertising executive. Um, and I'd been in advertising for 20 years, uh, about 19 and a half. And uh, I told her, I was like, I'm too busy. I don't have time for anything like that. I don't have time to add anything else into my world. Um, I was working three jobs, actually. I was running the marketing for a private school. And then at one time in my career, I owned my own ad agency. Well, I had lost my ad agency in the recession of 07. Um, and in two phone calls, my whole company was wiped out. Um, just the recession just killed us. And so I had to scramble and do anything I could to pick up work. So I was working at my children's school to try to help pay to keep them at the school. And then I was, um, had a couple clients still running for my old ad agency. So I was just, I was working 50 hours a week minimum. I was always tired. I was always felt like I was dropping a ball somewhere. And I know I think a lot of people can, can attest to feeling the same way, regardless what it is, regardless if they're a teacher or a nurse or whatever it is that fills their days. Um, when you work full time um, and you're trying to be a mother, um, and a wife, it's, it's hard. And I was really struggling with all my roles and didn't feel like I was doing any role well. And, um, but the sad thing was, is I felt like this is what I'm bested with for the rest of my life. I mean, I will be working for the rest of my life because I don't know how we can survive in 2016, 17, 18, you know, without two full incomes. Um, and um, also didn't want to take the products because um, some of you heard this if you were at the gold senior gold. So I apologize for the repeat, but um, I have a heart condition that's called paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. And it's where my heart will take off going in a regular beats about 180 to 200 beats a minute. Episodes will last about 20 minutes to half an hour. And so sometimes if I take uh, like supplements or over the counter medication or even prescriptions, it will affect my heart. And so I told Celeste, I was like, girl, I don't want to do it. I don't want to, I'm, I'm too busy. I don't have the time. I mean, I got my heart thing. It's just, I'm not, I'm not interested. And she was like, well, do me a favor. Take the list of ingredients because we all have access to the full list of ingredients. That's the coolest thing about the company is that they're so transparent. She said, take it to your doctors and just see what they say. She's like, vet it out so that I know that I'm not like peddling some, <laughs> you know, witchcraft, whatever. I mean, she'd only been in the business, March, April, I mean, two and a half months at the time. She was probably already Ruby or something. It's crazy. <laughs> but um, anyway, I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'll check this out. So I took it to some doctors and they were like, there's nothing in these products that can hurt you. I'm not seeing anything that could negatively affect you. And I was like, all right. Um, I took it to my son's naturopath. And he looked at it and he really liked some of the ingredients and some of the things that are in some of our products he was already giving to my son. 
And um, my third person that I shared it with was a holistic health coach in Dallas. And she was as crunchy as you can get. And she's like, girl, I'm going to tear this up. And she researched everything in it. And she was so fascinated by the, uh, by the ingredients that she wanted more information. And now she's almost a Sapphire ambassador on my team, which is awesome. Um, but so that being said, I've been given validation from three, you know, professionals, you know, in the, you know, health community. And I was like, all right, I'll try this, this stuff. So I tried the slam and I liked it, tried it another day. And I liked the way that I actually had energy that didn't involve my heart racing. Cause that's all I've ever equated energy to in my entire life was a racing heart, like caffeine, um, energy drinks, anything. And so I was like, okay, I could take this. This is good. And then, um, I've told the story also at the, at the presentation that, um, I was home. My husband works from the house and, um, the doorbell rang and it was the UPS guy. And I answered and he was like, he had me this box with all these plexus stickers all over it. Okay. This time I was only trying the slim for Celeste. Okay. So I was like, is she like pushing this stuff on me? And my husband like leans out of his office. He's like, babe, that box is mine. And I'm like, he's buying on the slide from my best friend. And I was like, what are you guys doing? Are you kidding me? You're like totally like going behind my back buying this plexus stuff. And he's like, you know, Ross, all of your friends are all over Facebook. They're talking about how great it is. They're talking about how good they feel. Why not? If everything in here is natural and we've had doctors that have given it the stamp of approval, why not? And he goes, and why aren't you even trying to market this? He's like, you, you have a great network. And also we could really use the money if it's as easy to make it as folks are saying in terms of just sharing the products. Um, and, you know, the, the hardest part, I think, financially for our family that we were dealing with is I have, a, I have a son who's high functioning on the autism spectrum, and he was needing a new uh, a therapy that had just come out. And we were wanting to offer it to our son, but we couldn't afford it. And it was $1,000 out of pocket every month. It was a, a neurotherapy out of um, a suburb here in Plano, called Plano, Texas. Um, and I was really worried about... Um, sending my son to middle school and not having the skills to be able to handle it. I mean, it's hard enough as a typical child to go to middle school and navigate that world, but to go as a child with any challenges is really scary. And as a mom of a child with those challenges, I was so, I was so scared. And so when my husband said that, I thought, okay, I'm going to set my pride aside for a minute because if you're talking about my son, and me helping my son, I will do anything to help this child. I will knock down the walls. I will scrap fight. Mama bear will come out and I will figure out a way to, you know, help this child. So I said, okay, all right, let's give this a shot. I'll probably make a couple hundred bucks. We'll pray through the rest. Let's just go. Let's give this a try. And so I did. I just jumped in, um, asked Celeste, you know, okay, what do we do? How does this happen? She gave me, I'm not kidding. She gave me a few tips. It's on one note, uh, notebook piece of notebook paper. I still have it. I saved it. I'm kind of looking for it. It was one little thing. I jotted down stuff and I took, I went out, just went after it. And in my first full month with Plexus, I made $1,200. And I was shocked. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Um, I didn't have to have a garage full of product. I didn't have to go pedal and push this on anybody. All I did was post on Facebook what I was doing and how it was changing me, period. That was it. I never, I mean, and in and, and that first month, I mean, I had barely even had time to breathe, really even to reach out and it, the, you know, the orders were coming in. So all of a sudden I saw this stamp of, oh my gosh, I can actually do that. What if, what if I could actually do something with this? Um, that thousand dollars was unbelievable um, because of course it helped my son, but that extra $200 y'all that gave me the hope to tell me, oh my gosh, you can do so much more. It was almost like a little nudge from God saying, look, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless you more because this is going to be a bigger blessing in the end if you go after it. I mean, I was handed this gift and I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to do this. I've got to give this a shot. What if I could be home with my kids? I worked my, you know, their entire lives. They've never known what it's like to have a mommy at home. They've never known. I mean, and they've been shuttled around to grandma's and this and that. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if I could be that mom that picks them up from school and that mom that's home and I'm baking the brownies and, you know, that I actually can be a room mom and that I can actually not be the one that's always forgetting something, you know? Oh my gosh, it's, it's red shirt day and my mom forgot, of course. I mean, that was totally me. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I could be that totally like engaged mom. And so my goal, my 
my why shifted from being able to t help Cole because I knew I could help him at that point to, oh my gosh, what if I can actually be home with my kids? So again, I just put my blinders on, I laid out a plan for myself, and I went to work. Um, back in the day, people were ranking up extremely fast. So my rank up to you all, when I tell you what it was, will sound very fast, but people in my circle were ranking up faster than me. Um, I went Emerald in nine months. I went Sapphire two months later and Diamond three months after that. I had people in my immediate circle that were ranking up every single month. So at that point, I even thought it was between silver and gold because that's to me, that's your, your hardest, you know, that's going to be your hardest journey because you're setting up the foundation of your team. It's like you're setting up three legs to your stool. It's kind of how I tell my team um, that I was sat at silver for five months and I was like, and I had, I had a lot of customers, but I couldn't flip them to ambassadors. I couldn't figure that out. When I finally figured out how the pieces all worked and I started a strong team page, huge paradigm shift and everything flipped and then it just took off. And from uh, December all the way to uh, March, I, I ranked up. I think I double ranked in January, um, ranked to Senior Ruby in February and Emerald uh, in March. It just snowballed and it, and it just took off. Um, it, was, it was unbelievable. It really was. And I still, to this day, I look back on it and, I, and I, I'm, I'm still shocked. Um, and I, you know, I look at my team now and, and some people are moving fast and some people aren't moving fast, but it doesn't matter how fast anybody's moving. That whole speed thing or seeing other people and comparing yourself to other people, y'all throw that out the window because the Lord knows exactly where he wants you to be. He knows exactly what your journey is going to look like. And if you're moving slow, he's trying to teach you something through that. And, and I've seen that. And I've, I've been able to witness that on my second position because now I'm back in the game again. I'm back in the trenches and I'm reworking the second position so I know how it feels to struggle and to work and to have a lot of white lines and this and that. And I think that's God's way of teaching me how to love on my team and train them properly by putting me in the trenches with them. And I, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the slower journey because I know I'm learning so, so much. Um, so that's kind of my journey of how I got where I am. And, um, I guess I reentered, they allow you to reenter when you hit 6,000 points. Um, you hit uh, diamond at 4,500, and once you hit 6,000, you can re-enter under yourself. So when I hit 6,000, I re-entered under myself. Um, my second position isn't moving as fast, but I'm still adding to it. I'm, you know, it's, you, when your team gets larger, you'll find that you have a, it's very challenging to focus on your own business and also focus on your team. And finding that balance is always a challenge. I, there's no perfect way and there's no perfect answer, but you can work really hard to give fair amount of love to your team and encouragement and training and this and that. But always remember, you guys, you got to shift back and focus on your own business. And your own business is gaining your own level ones and your own customers. If you allow that to diminish and you're loving on your team and you're like, oh, but I'm taking care of my team and I'm doing this for my team and everything's for my team. The problem is, is your business is like a bathtub and that drain is always open. It's always pouring out. You have to always have your faucet on. You have to always be working your business. And not only that, you need to be working your business because there's more people out there that need this. There's more people out there in your sphere of influence that need it for health wise. They need it for um, financial freedom. Um, and oh my gosh, this opportunity we have, how can we not share it with everybody that we possibly, you know, that we come in contact with? So, you know, do your best to continue to work your business. Um, I said that I would share a couple of my business, my uh, strongest business tips, business building tips. So I'm going to share a few. And this is what a lot of people ask me more than anything is, how did I get started at the beginning? Because what really a lot of people struggle with is working. And if you're not working, you got kids at home that you're trying to manage and work this crazy plexus business into that nooks and crannies of that life. And how does that look, what does that look like and how did you make that work? Um, the first thing I did, and I knew I had to do this, and it's because, I know it's because I did have um, a corporate background, but I knew I had to get organized. I knew there's no way I can do this while working full time if I'm not organized. And I'm not meaning, y'all, if, if, if I could spin this computer around, you could see this office, you'd be like, what? Because it is a hot mess up in here. But when it comes to the actual act of my Plexus business, I did get organized. 
the first thing I did, um, and I would take, and because I didn't have a lot of time, I had to figure out time when to do this. So I took a Saturday morning where I woke up a couple hours before my family and I got on my computer and I made some files. One of them said pro bio, one of them said bio plans, one of them said before and after. I mean, I did all different little categories and I would save really good posts or really good research into these files to get myself organized. So that, cause I was so new that people were asking me things that I didn't have the answer to. Um, like, most people don't, you know, most of us, you know, when we started, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. We were just going after it and then asking our upline. Well, the challenge is I didn't have all that time. So I tried to do as much research as I could and file away any information I might need so that when somebody did ask me, I could open up that file, retrieve some information and send it to them. Uh, the most powerful thing I did that I used more than anything, I wrote an email to myself answering the question, so what is Plexus? I also wrote another one to myself that said, what does it mean to be an ambassador? Give me some details about being an ambassador. I wrote these emails to myself and then I saved them in a, in a file um, in my emails on my phone. I called it Plexus Forwards. Then when anybody inboxed me, so okay Roz, I'm gonna bite, tell me about this Plexus thing. I pulled up that email, typed in their email address, boom, sent, and I went back to work. It was very easy. I, and it was interesting. I went back to 2013 and looked to see how many times I sent that email. It was insane. And I realized, my gosh, that was my saving grace, was having that information at my fingertips so I could shoot that off at any time. Um, I also inboxed myself on Facebook Messenger a lot of before and afters that I really liked because back in the day we could use a lot of before and afters, but today it would just be a good graphic, a really good post with the text with it. And so if I needed something, I just pull up my own messenger to myself, highlight, copy, boom, paste, go on. Um, doing those little things allowed me to utilize the only time I had during the day to work my business, which was when I woke up, I would wake up kind of while I'm getting ready, I would shoot off a post. Um, and then got my kids to school, went to work. At my lunch break, I utilized that entire hour. I stopped going out to lunch, I brought my lunch, I would eat and I would just work. And that's when I would field questions. Um, I told my team as I did gain a small team, I told them to exactly when they could reach me. I was very honest. I said, guys, you know I work full time. You can only reach me um, at lunch, my lunch period, um, at, and I gave them a time right after, you know, right after work. And then at night between eight and 11, those are the only times you can reach me. Outside of that, I need you all to lean on each other. I need you all to ask each other and help each other find the answers. Use resources, use that little eyeglass up at the top of the, uh, of the pages and do your research. If you're still stumped, send me a message and I will get back with you within, within those times that I just shared with you. I told them that again and again and again. And I, I'll be honest with you, I really think that is a reason my, my core team grew the way they did because they had to lean on each other and they didn't feel alone. I think when you have people that sign up under you and you're the only Plexus ambassador they know, they feel kind of lonely if you're not able to communicate with them. Um, but if they have two or three other people on the team that are checking in, hey, you guys, I found this cool post. Oh my gosh, thanks. I found this cool research on BioCleanse and you know the magnesium levels are fabulous. And they were having these amazing dialogue where they weren't having to depend on me. Yet when I was available, I jumped in the game. Okay, guys, what are we doing? All right, Roz, we're really confused about Fast Start Gold and how that works. I'm like, okay, guys, this is how it works. And I could train, train, train. And then, okay, guys, got to go. Got to get back to work. Clicked, went off. And then they got back to helping each other. My two strongest legs joined at that time, and they're both huge, huge power legs. One is a diamond gold, and one is a sapphire ambassador, and they're amazing. Um, and they say, and they even share it in their testimonies. They're like, if Roz hadn't kind of pushed us in the deep end and said, well, you guys got to paddle, um, we wouldn't have learned as much as we did as fast as we did. Um, granted, trust me, we all skinned our knees. We made big mistakes often. And you know what, but making them together was kind of cool. Because if one of us made a mistake, all of us got to learn from it. And I was very on a very, I threw pride out the window. When I made a mistake, I owned up to it. I didn't throw anyone under the bus. I didn't blame anybody. I'm like, that was me. That was so me. I totally said that you could get, you could uh, uh, get a bonus if you um, went silver in the first month. I told some people that. Yeah, that was awesome. So they're all excited thinking they're getting an extra hundred bucks. And I'm like, oh, you know what? 
Ugh, I was wrong on that. <laughs> I felt awful. But you know, there that, that happens. I think the more you're honest with your team and the more you're like, hey, this is me. I'm just like you. I'm learning this, but you know what? I'm gonna if I make a mistake, I'll own up to it and I will do everything I can never to do that again. They um they appreciate that. Um, I would have appreciated that if my upline had done the same. And she did often, you know. Um, I, I, and, and that was another good thing, too, is I had Celeste, too, where I had a good relationship with my upline that I could reach her when I had questions. So for any of you all, if you, um, I don't know how deep you are on this team, but if you go to your direct and your direct can't answer a question, go to the uh, ambassador above them and ask them the same question. Um, always include your direct upline just so that you're not jumping around, um, just because it helps, it get, keeps everybody in the loop and, and it allows your direct upline to know where you're training, where, you, you know, where you're needing some extra training. Um, and that, that's been great, even for me, for me and Celeste. Um, okay, that was a very long answer to my point one, so I apologize for that, but let's roll on to number two. Um, oh, this is a biggie, okay. Y'all, make sure you're reaching out to every single person that you know everybody i mean even if it's weird even if it's like oh my gosh you know that's the you know that's the mayor's wife this is awkward it doesn't matter you reach out to everybody because i guarantee you if you if you don't somebody else will and they will be the first touch point therefore it's fair game for them to have that business that is not this the way we do business is not typical it's not typical in um you know in corporate america in corporate America, it's dog eat dog. And if you, you know, if you try to, you know, share plexus with somebody and they're like not interested and somebody else swoops in, they can grab them and go in traditional business. And plexus, you guys know, we try to respect each other. We try to say, hey, if you know, if you heard it from Kendall first, you know, why don't you go, why don't you go back and, and chat with her about it? But, you know, go for it. The products are awesome. But you know what? She told you about it. So head on over there. You can go ahead and, you know, chat with her. She'd love to tell you more about it. That's kind of how we do it in the Plexus world. Um, just out of sheer respect, since we do share so much. Um, if you don't do that, if you sneakily try to like grab everybody you possibly can, that's going to cause some resentment. It's going to cause some issues on the team. And, and again, you'll be blessed for what you're doing, you know, ethically with your team. Um, just be careful on that standpoint. But all that being said, make sure you're reaching out to everybody. Guys, I did not. I did not reach out to everybody because of, because of pride and because of um, shame. I thought people were going to laugh at me, whatever, whatever the reason was. I mean, I'm human, got my own insecurities as well. Um, I've grown past those with, with Plexus. I've grown past those being in network marketing for so long. I've realized that, hey, people need this way more than I need to be worried about what people think of what I'm doing. Um, and by getting pushing myself out of the way, I've been able to so boldly share with people and um, I, people are pretty, you know, intrigued that I'm able to share so boldly and be passionate about it. And so I've realized that people are responding to me a lot more positively, you know, over the past couple of years. But I, I kicked myself for not reaching out to every single person back in the day. Um, two days ago, one of my best friends, she's a level one, asked me, hey, Roz, did you ever contact so-and-so, one of our best friends from high school? And I thought about it, and I'm like, you know what? I never have. And she said, well, she's been seeing all your pictures from convention, Roz, and she inboxed me and asked me about it. And I was like, you know what? Go for it. Go get her. You go after, call her. Let's go to lunch. This is your ambassador, because I never reached out to her. It was completely my fault all day long. And again, and so of course, y'all, I'll tell you what, after that phone call, I like got out like my whole like old address book from back in the day and I was calling up everybody. I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta reach out to everybody. All my old high school friends, I had a big group in high school we ran around with and I realized only about five of them had really, you know, heard about Plexus. So anyway, and then there's also a really, really powerful friend of mine. She is a, um, a pastor's wife, she's an author, She's extremely successful. Uh, I was too embarrassed to share with her. She's now a Ruby ambassador on another friend's team. Um, one of my coworkers, when I used to work for Dr. Pepper Corporate, um, hugely successful woman, now owns her own company down in Dallas. I was too embarrassed to share with her. She joined uh, under another friend and is now a silver ambassador. So these are two people that I was very close with. And then if I would have just reached out to them and just pretty much shown them respect of, 
I respect you as a leader. I respect you as a business owner. I respect you for your influence in the community. And I think you'd be amazing at this. If you have any interest at all in this business, in supplements, at anything, let me know because you would be legit at this. If I would have had that conversation with either of those two women, any of those three women, they probably would have been on my team, but I didn't. So to this day, at year three, I'm still learning the lesson and I'm still having to, I like, that was actually my to-do for this week is to revisit my list of hundred and find holes where I um, was too prideful to share to people. And I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go crazy. You know what? It's time. It's time that I kind of like, kind of rip off that band-aid and go after it. So reach out to everybody. And let's see, 826. Okay, I'm trying to stay on time here. Um, my last thing is, oh, um, you know what? I'm realizing, and I realize this with my team, um, often even to this day, make sure that you're really, when you're sharing the opportunity, that you're really sharing the full opportunity. Um, when you share with people, oh my gosh, you can, you know, you, you can make a lot of money with Plexus, or you can be really successful, or you can get a car with Plexus, and that's where the conversation stops. People have no idea really what you're talking about. To them, a lot of money could be a thousand bucks. Some, it could be, oh, you know, one person who makes, you know, a million dollars a year. Um, and, but, and they're just kind of prejudging this whole network marketing thing called Plexus. They have no idea how much you can really make. I think sending out just that little graph that we have um, the uh, income disclosure document, that is even hard to read for a lot of people because the layman doesn't understand the ranks. They don't understand it. And so sharing with people, no, let me tell you how much you can really make. It is very easy to make $1,000 a month. It is also with a little bit of ump and work, you can make $5,000 a month. And I know at least 65 to 100 people who make over $500,000 a year. Those kinds of conversations rattle people. They're like, oh, really? Because I have a friend who does mascara, or I have a friend who sells purses, and they're lucky to bring in 500 bucks. That's what some people think we make in Plexus. And it's so not true. They also think that we have a um, garage full of Plexus products, and we don't. They just assume. There's so many preconceived notions of what network marketing is. Um, I had them too. I honestly thought that we were going to have to have all, I was going to have to buy a bunch of these products every month and I was going to have to have like $1,000 worth of products to be able to say, who knows? I mean, I had all these ideas of what I thought it was, but I'm realizing even now when I'm trying to train my new folks of, do you all know what you have in your hands? Do you know how easy this is? Do you know how easy it is to make, let's say, use the number again, $1,000. Now, let me spell out to you how you can make $1,000 with these sales, with this preferred bonus, with these amount of ambassadors under you, you could make $1,000. And people realize that's it. That's all. And I can make that much money. The more I've shared the reality of, you know, the blessings that come out of this business, the more it really triggers people and it really triggers spouses. If you could have this conversation with a woman with her spouse in the room, He's the one whose ears are going to be perked up. She may not have been in the business world, so this might just all be going over her head. And he's the one that's been in the business world, and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like yelling from the kitchen, wait a minute. Did you just say, did you just say that you can make 10 grand a month? And I'm like, oh, that's like, that's like the, you know, that's what emeralds make. And he's like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean? And then the conversation, you know, goes from there. Um, so really, really spell out the opportunity. Spell out what it means to be Emerald, that you get $500 a month, that you, you know, towards a car, um, that when you're Diamond, you get $1,000 a month toward the car. Tell them they can buy, or, buy that car, they can lease it, it's their choice. You make that deal yourself and the company pays that $500 or $1,000 to you in your check every single month. Just that alone, the ease of that even gets people excited. If you don't understand the compensation, and you don't understand it enough, the compensation plan or um, the perks that come along with it, ask your upline. And if they don't understand, they'll go and ask someone else and just say, hey, it might be a really good Zoom call to go over and say, okay, let's lay out all the perks of this business so that we can properly share to potentials. We can properly share to our downline who's just like, 
she signed up and she's sitting on the fence and she's really not doing much. And she's like, yeah, I was just going to sell and whatever. And I was just, and I'm like, but didn't you want to make $500 for your car payment? Yeah, but I just kind of, you know, I, I, I shared this with some people. I'm like, you know how easy it is to make that 500? Let me tell you what you can do. If you do this, this, and this, you're making 500 a month. Ross, are you serious? Yeah, that's all you got to do, girl. That's it. And you know what? You get four preferred customers. You're going to make more than that. And they're like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't realize. Those are the conversations you really should have with your team. Really let them know the power of our, of our um, compensation plan, the power of the perks that come along with this, and how much that can bless their family. Because we're all, y'all are all on this call because you want this business. We're all in this because we're able to be entrepreneurs, own our own business, and we're able to do it so strongly because we actually have products that people need and want and use every single day of their life. I mean, it's the perfect storm and we're all in it and it's fabulous. So those are my tips. Um, that's my info. Is there anything else you need from me, my friend? Well, I love that last one because I have one girl in particular in mind that works for another network marketing company. And I have never thought about the fact that she probably thinks I make because I know she doesn't make a whole lot. She probably thinks that I make the same as her. And she probably thinks I have inventory and probably thinks I do parties like she does. And I've never really like laid yeah. that out for her. You know, I've always just kind of held back because I wanted to respect that she was yeah. with that other one. But I mean, I don't think about the fact that I could bless her by sharing this with her. Yeah. And, like it doesn't have to be that hard. You don't have to do three parties a week and, you know. So thank you. That was a really good yeah. one. And I've said that to people before. I'm like, you know what the best part of the Plex is? I've never done a party once. Mm -hmm. I said, I come and speak because people ask me to come and speak and share kind of my journey and what I've done. But I, I've never had a party. Actually, I've had never had anybody buy anything at a party. We don't, we encourage people not to bring checkbooks. This is not about buying. This is about, hey, this is what you can do if you, if you choose. Mm -hmm. And it's treating the people. They're like, oh, okay. All right. Maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll check that out. So yeah. Well, I do have a question and, um, I know we've, we're kind of promised you 30 minutes, so I might push you a little bit over. Sorry, but not sorry. Um, so I do have a question though. Okay. You obviously grew very fast and I know you probably get this one a lot, but what were your daily IPAs like in that time? Uh, I know you had your blinders on, but how many people did you make it your point to reach out to every day? And then for those that joined you, you know, you obviously had to have explosive momentum on your team in that time. So like, what do you feel was kind of like the trigger to help? I know with your team page and a solid foundation there, but um, how did you kind of get people going? Well, what we did is we had, um, gosh, it was, we didn't, we didn't have Zoom back then. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't even have any training materials from corporate. So we kind of just made them all up on our own. Um, we would, um, the minute somebody would sign up, immediately we made sure to have a conversation with them and train them as much as we could within their first week. That was a big thing. You know, we always were like, guys, get them trained so they at least can do something autonomously without us in, within their first week. And I, I mean week within their first seven days of signing up. That was a biggie. Um, secondly, I, I was posting a lot. I was posting like three times a day. And when you post at different times a day, uh, the Facebook algorithms work differently. So the people that are, can only look at Facebook once a day, they're pretty much only seeing stuff at that time of day that you're posting. So if you've got like a fabulous business post and you put it up at night, more than likely your people who only check Facebook at lunch are not seeing it. So we made sure we were posting in the morning, lunch, and in the evening. So minimum of three times a day. The people in my circle of friends who grew the fastest posted the most. They, yes, they got people annoyed. Yes, they had people unfriend them. But I have a friend who I went to dinner with last night. She went emerald in six months and she went diamond in 11 from when she started. It was insane, but she had no choice. She was a single mother of one little girl and it was sink or swim. And she's like, I've got to do this. And I respected her so much through her whole journey and she did it. I mean, boom, straight to the top in, in 11 months. Rainy, yeah, Rainy, yeah. <laughs> Rainy and I's uh, daughters go to school together. Yeah. Um, Beth Anderson, another diamond. Um, we worked together. We our, our desks faced each other. And we did our first year of business together. So that kind of helped because I had someone to kind of, you know, bounce stuff off of. Mm -hmm. Same with Ariel Post. Um, another friend. We all of, these are all girls I ran with before, before Plexus. 
Um, and we all kind of did the same thing. Um, let's see, another thing, um, don't just depend on Facebook and hide behind your computer and think that just your posts are gonna bring in people. There's a lot of people in your network that wanna be asked. They wanna be invited to the opportunity. So if you are just posting on, posting, I'm doing what everybody's saying, I'm sharing, you know, I'm sharing, no. You need to reach out and reaching out on voice messenger is much more powerful than reaching out on, um, on an email or a text. So we were reaching out to friends going, hey girl, I know you've got to be seeing my crazy flex of stuff I'm doing, you know, on Facebook and you haven't commented on anything, which means you're probably freaked out. But listen, I'm not going to lie. This is extremely legit. This is amazing. And it would be so much fun if you would come do this with me. I think you'd be fabulous at it. Give me a shout. You know, I, if you're not interested, tell me now and I'm out of here. But if you are remotely interested, come do this with me and give me a shout. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of messages we were leaving. Those are the kind of message people like Ellen Ford leaves, where it's just, and Ellen Ford is a diamond senior gold on my team. She actually outranked me on my team. Um, amazing recruiter. And that's what she does. And she's just like, recruit, recruit, recruit. She's like, I'm going to share this with everybody that's breathing in my sphere of influence. And that's kind of what we did at the beginning. We were just sharing, sharing, sharing. We were telling everybody we could. We were posting. Um, and we were consistent. We didn't let a week go by where we weren't posting or sharing because people were waiting for us to fail. They were waiting for our passion to die. And once we kept on going and we kept getting more successful and our, our, you know, our teams got bigger and bigger and bigger, they started taking notice. And then you know how, I mean, when you get the car, a whole nother sect of people start in, okay, it's now legit, you now got a car. When you go diamond, a whole nother set, you know, I mean, at, at every stage of your journey, you're going to get different people that are interested. If any of you have ever been in uh, the professional world, an executive of any type, I would recommend utilizing LinkedIn because what you can do with LinkedIn is you, I don't go on there and sell Plexus but I do put my rank ups every time I rank up. So it says I got a promotion. When I got a promotion, a message goes out to my entire LinkedIn community and they come and they congratulate me. Well, when they see you ranking up kind of fast, then they start asking questions. And I've gotten questions and customers and ambassadors for my LinkedIn because of that. Um, and I try to keep that very respectful. I try to follow whatever the trend is of that social media platform. LinkedIn is not a salesy place. Everyone shares like information. So I might share an article about gut health on there, but I would never try, I would never put my website and try to sell my product there. But I get professionals interested in my business because of, of my growth. Um, and also, you know, posting little things too about your team, um, about its growth that people might not understand. If you say, I'm a Ruby ambassador, the layman is like, well, I don't know what that means. But if you can do the one, you guys have all seen this where you're like, 581, what does this number mean? And everyone's like, oh, whatever, your address. Well, you're like, no, this is how many people are on now on my Plexus team. Or, you know, I think since I've been in, I think I've had 21,000 that have signed up on my team since I've been in. But that's not active. But I think active, I'm probably around 12 to 15. But um, I can put those numbers out there and it perks up people's ears. They're like, how in the world do you know that many people? I'm like, I don't know that many people at all, y'all. That's the great part about network marketing. Out of those people, I got about 40 that are my special folks, only 12 that are really rocking it. To be a diamond ambassador with Plexus, you only need seven level ones, guys. You only need seven. I, I am a testament that you don't need 100 level ones to be successful. You know, I, have, I have 12 that are really working it out of my 40. Some other ones are, are dabbling, you know, and they're, they're moving a little bit, but 12 that are actually working the business. You can do it. You don't need that many. You just need to find runners. You need to find people who want the business. And if you don't have anybody that wants it, then work hard to pour that belief into them. If they still don't want it, then you go out and you find somebody else who wants it because there are people out there who will work their tails off just like you and want it just like you. You just have to present the opportunity in the right way so that they believe that they can do it too. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. Uh, sorry, I made notes earlier while you were talking. So if y'all keep seeing my face change lighting, it's because I'm pulling my spreadsheet up. Um, okay, I said that was the last question, but I do have one real quick one. You can answer it really fast. Um, so you talked a lot about organization, and I feel like all of us really struggle in that area, m uh, myself in particular. So obviously, you reached out to people, a lot of people, and follow up 
huge mm -hmm. part of this. Yes. Do you have like a system that you found works really well for you with follow up? Well, I would follow up if I reached out to somebody and they did not respond, you know, and I had something cool to say, and especially like if there was a, a new launch or, or, or promotion, um, I'd reach out to them once. When the first promotion came up, I'd reach out to them again. I would continue to reach out to them every other month, maybe three months until they said no. When they said no, I put them on the calendar for next year. No does not mean no in my book. No means not now. So I put them on, and this is back in 2013, I put them on my 2014 calendar. And I'm like, I will wait till something big happens, like a new product's released or something else, or maybe when I hit diamond or whatever it was, and I'll reach back out to them. I'm saying, I know you said no, but here I am now doing, I was where you were and I've done this. Does this still disinterest you? Some are like, and some will say, all right, tell me, tell me how you did this. I mean, you will be shocked, but keep consistent. Follow up, like if I reach out to somebody, I'll really water it down. If I reach out to somebody very first time, I share with them, I hear crickets, nothing. I'd probably wait about two months before I'd share again. Um, if anybody bites, oh, I follow up within three days. If they still are silent, three more days. And I just say, hey, I am not here to bug you. I just know you asked me about it. So I'm here if you need me. If after that second nibble that they're, they're still silent, I might wait a month. Because I don't want to be that annoying plexus person. And I'll say that. I'm like, I am not here to annoy you. I am not here to beat you down. But you asked me about it. So I was just kind of letting you know I'm here. I'm here for any questions. And some people are like, thank you for keeping reaching out. I've been so swamped. You know, my mom's in the hospital and this and that. But yes, I'll get back to you, you know, as soon as I can. I'm like, all right, girl, I'll just check in with you. It's okay in a month. Oh, yeah, Roz, that's fine. Okay. Click. And I write that down. Um, getting an honest dialogue with these folks and telling them, I am not here to annoy you. I am just here to help you out. So you just let me know. Um, I, I like, um, I'm old school. I have like a notebook and I just made a grid and I put all the names down. And then in the first column, I wrote the date that I reached out to them. And then I wrote the manner in which I reached out. So like EM was email, TX was text, VM was voicemail. So that I wasn't doing the same thing every time. I was kind of changing up the way because everybody responds to things differently. They learn differently. They respond differently. Some respond really well with an email, some with a text, some with a voice message. So I tried different avenues to try to maybe reach them in the manner in which they enjoyed to be communicated to. I'm just trying to learn a little bit more about them. I also would have like, at the end, I would have a whole like line for notes and I would jot down notes. She was interested in the bio cleanse because of constipation issues. Follow up, send her some research, da, 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 da. send her a great testimony, you know, on, on bio cleanse or um, her son really needs a triplex, you know, her son has ADD, you know, share a lot. Cause I can, I, I, when somebody shares about a child, it's a whole new game for me. I go guns blazing because I can't do that on social media. This is my only avenue to communicate to people if they have any issues with their children. So when I talk to people, I try to slip in the child thing every single time I talk to them. That's another tip. Every time, yeah, my, family, my kids take it and this and that, because you can't say that. And I've said this to people and it really kind of impressed them. I said, um, hey, listen, I know you don't see anything about children on Facebook because honestly, we're not allowed. The F, you know, FDA does not allow us to talk about children, but this is a game changer for kids if you, have, if you want any more information about it. Just letting you know. And then they're like, well, what do you mean? What does it do for the kids? And then I can lay it all out. I can lay out what it does for ADD, ADHD, for sensory processing disorder, for autism, for anything that I have experience with. And then I have friends, eczema, huge allergies, insane. I mean, we all know this. A lot of this is stuff we can't put on social media right now. But my gosh, if you get someone's ear, you guys, take full advantage and use it. And use that opportunity to share the stuff that we can't share on social media. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I promise we will let you go now, but girl, I'm so appreciative for you getting on here. Sure, guys. I know you're just coming off of a huge training and prep for all that. So okay. I like this is fun, cool. but, um, okay. I would, I would offer you guys to ask questions, but it's already been 45 minutes. So if y'all have a question, I don't want to inbox anything to you. I'm happy to answer anything. If you want to, um, just inbox me girl and I'll just okay. find out some answers for y'all. Yeah, so if you guys can think of anything that you want to like pick her brain on, just shoot me a message. I'm, I should be friends with everybody on here. I try to stay on top of that. So, um, and then we will get more info from her. So thank you so much. Bye. I'm going to stop. The